Thank you for joining us again and welcome back to Ed Explorer. The South Africa and the United States of America's strategic relationship is at all time low. I mean, it's as low as you can imagine. Remember, these two major countries are very important in their geographic locations. The United States on one hand as one of the most powerful country, if not the most powerful in the world, and South Africa, the most powerful country in Africa and the strategic and most important single advanced economy in the continent of Africa. Remember, South Africa as a nation is never afraid to tell the United States where it has gone wrong. However, in recent years, the friction between these two very important nations have gone to an extent where South Africa has its own strategic operations and is free to choose its own partners. However, the United States of America does have its own strategic interest. Remember, these two countries made huge numbers in 2022, over $25 billion in terms of trade. Import alone was just over 16 billion, its figures are there, and you have export just over 9 billion US dollars. However, with a number of geopolitical events happening in the world, South Africa so important has put its grounds in a number of areas and a number of lawmakers in the United States, in one way or the other, have pulled out South Africa in a number of areas. We will dive into that in just a moment. But most recently, the South Africa's Foreign Minister, Naledi Pando, is currently in the United States to shove our relationship in a number of ways to see how to strategically build this very important relationship in a number of areas. Let's listen to what she has to say, and then we will join in on the other side. The U.S. House of Representatives is reviewing a bill that questions the country's relationship with South Africa. And the bill accuses South Africa of building ties with countries and actors that undermine America's national security. South Africa's foreign minister, Nelly Dipandor, is in Washington, D.C. to discuss the tense ties and spoke to Al Jazeera's Mike Hanna. There's almost an implication uh, that uh, when America holds a particular position, uh, South Africa must follow. And it's very interesting that other countries that share uh, the perspectives that South Africa hold uh, are not being, uh, uh, you know, uh, dealt with in the way uh, that we are. So I don't know whether it's because we're Africans or uh, some other reason. It might be also the fact of the uh, stance we've taken uh, with response to the current uh, uh, war of Israel, uh, uh, which is being visited upon uh, the people of Palestine uh, most harshly and painfully, and the fact that uh, we've approached the International Court of Justice uh, may be causing uh, some uh, discomfort and uh, disquiet. We are an important uh, partner for the United States uh, of America, as they are uh, uh, for us. And so I do hope that uh, we will be able to repair uh, the relationship and uh, continue on the established uh, basis that we've built up over uh, many years. South Africa and the United States are very important partners in a number of areas. Before even what is happening in the world right now, South Africa has stood up the United States in a number of ways. I think this relationship has been sour in a number of areas because also South Africa has taken Israel to court and some of the lawmakers in the United States who also have other strategic interests have pushed back to South Africa in a whole lot of areas. So you believe South Africa's decision to take Israel to the International Court of Justice is a primary reason for the tenseness of the relationship? Well, certainly uh, this is mentioned uh, in a number of resolutions. You may be aware there was a letter, a type of petition letter, by over 200 uh, uh, legislators across uh, the party line, so a bipartisan uh, uh, letter, which uh, alleged uh, disquiet at the fact that uh, South Africa doesn't support uh, uh, Israel and uh, supports uh, Palestine. And then uh, going beyond that uh, to even as the bill does uh, claim that the African National Congress has some form of partnership with Hamas. This is entirely uh, untrue. It's also related to the non-aligned stance we've taken with respect to Russia and Ukraine, where South Africa continues to talk to both countries, to the leaders of both, 
to attempt to persuade uh, that they should agree to arrive at a point where they sit around a common table and begin to discuss what a negotiated uh, settlement may look like with full respect for all uh, the provisions of the United Nations uh, Charter. But like I said before, these two countries have cooperated in the areas of agriculture, health, development, scientific areas as well, and more importantly, in counter-terrorism in a number of areas. And trade within these two countries is very important. I think apart from China, the United States is one of the highest importers of South Africa's products, and so does South Africa as well relationship. But things got really sour most recently when the uh, Russian Ukrainian war came up. You can imagine most recently, I think a couple of months ago, last year in particular, where there was an incident in Simon Town where United States ambassador uh, greatly accused uh, the South African government of having exported arms to Russia. We all knew how that turned out. And the relationship got to an extent where it got sour then, but not as worse as it is at the moment. However, other experts see it differently that this relationship is only at the surface level when we talk about the mainstream media. But in the diplomatic circles, there are constant talks and interaction behind the scene that you and I have no idea. Let's listen to what this uh, expert looked into how this relationship is. The relations between the United States of America and South Africa are warm, cordial, and strong. Um, and they are mutually beneficial. The U.S. understands uh, this, and we also understand this. So these are uh, relations that are very important to the two countries. Um, it's not the first time that some few individuals think they must pr uh, push uh, bills of this nature, and we understand this is a reaction to South Africa uh, taking um, Israel to the ICJ. So we expected some reaction, but we're not worried because the views of these individuals behind this bill are not shared by the U.S. administration. How do I know? Because we are in constant contact with our U.S. counterparts, both at the State Department as well as at the White House. Uh, if you were to ask Secretary Blinken, how many foreign ministers does he speak to as often as Dr. Naledi Pando? He probably tell you she's the one I speak to more than the others. Uh, so we've got interactions at the highest levels because these are important relations between the two countries. So we don't think this bill will go anywhere. In 2023, several U.S. lawmakers called for South Africa to be punished for its alleged interaction and also strategic relationship with Russia. I think that caused a lot of confusion in the content of Africa in particular, and more importantly uh, in, in, in South Africa itself, where you have other experts pushing back that why should South Africa be singled out? But again, that letter was sent to uh, now current uh, Secretary of State Antony Blinken. We made a video about that on this channel. As the Russian-Ukraine war drags on, African countries are facing a number of threats, especially South Africa. U.S. lawmakers want South Africa to face consequences for supporting Russia amid Ukrainian war. A handful of senior United States of America lawmakers from both parties have sent a letter to Secretary of State Antony Blinken, National Security Advisor Jacob Sullivan, and also the top U.S. Trade Envoy Catherine Tai, calling for South Africa to be punished for its perceived support of Russia amid ongoing war in Ukraine. The June 9 letter argued that, in spite of its stated neutral stand on Ukraine war, the South African government has strengthened relationship with Moscow since Vladimir Putin, President of Russia, launched Russian full-scale invasion in February of 2022, making it necessary, the lawmakers argue, for the United States to take action. Moving ahead. The letter is the first call for open retaliation for what many in Washington see as South Africa's moving towards alignment with Russia in a possible threat to U.S. national interest. Specifically, the lawmakers call for an upcoming summit under the auspices of the United States African Growth and Opportunity Act, known as AGOA, 
to be relocated from South Africa to another country. The letter signed by Senator Chris Cohn and that's a Democrat and Republican Senator Jim Rich, both members of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and endorsed by members from both parties on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, says they are seriously concerned that hosting the 2023 AGOA Forum in South Africa will serve as an endorsement of the country's support for Russia and possible violation of the United States sanction laws. The lawmakers say recent actions by South Africa call into question the country's eligibility to benefit from the AGOA, which grants duty-free access to the United States market to goods from certain sub-Saharan African countries, including South Africa. There is a requirement in AGOA that benefiting countries should not engage in activities that undermine the United States of America's national security or foreign policy objectives. South Africa has strong relationships with Russia, with China. Couldn't this be of advantage to the United States in terms of forging links with these countries? Our underlying fundamental philosophy in foreign policy is we always seek peace. Uh, we always seek negotiation. Um, we are uh, mandated by the Freedom Charter of South Africa to always pursue international peace and friendship and that is how uh, we've conducted them ourselves. Of course, uh, having been a people who suffered under the oppression of apartheid, we reject oppression wherever uh, uh, we find it and seek to reduce harm uh, for people who are striving for freedom and thus uh, it is, I think, natural uh, that South Africa uh, would support the just cause of the people of Palestine, as well as, of course, support uh, the people of Israel uh, in having their own state. But we can never agree that it is correct to kill thousands of innocent uh, civilians uh, in Palestine and for us to then uh, attempt to pretend that there's some uh, just cause behind this murderous onslaught. And it's important to note that by United States of America trying to tell South Africa uh, what to do in several other areas, I think that's just going to, uh, to escalate the relationship to a whole different level of lowness, I would say. Because right now, we are looking at it, it's low, but we don't know how low it's going to get to. But let me just talk about this first of all. Russia and, and South Africa have a long-standing relationship that goes back to the appetite time. And we all know that this relationship is not gonna be severed by any means, and it's not gonna change no matter what happens. But again, South Africa has relationship with China, and China is a very important strategic partner for South Africa. And I think that's never gonna change. But the United States of America is also a very important partner for South Africa. Now, if we look at that, South Africa feels like America is pushing the paternalistic approach which most African countries have pushed back over the years. Then this is going to cause a lot of friction. Something more why this relationship is at all time low is that the letter that was sent to the US Secretary of State Antony Blinken last year calling for South Africa to be punished for its alleged relationship. It was at a specific time when the United States of America was having a review with AGOA. For those of you who don't know what AGOA is, the African Growth and Opportunity Act is a very important trade relationship uh, between the United States of America and countries of the Sub-Saharan African uh, region. You can check a video on our channel. We've made a number of videos in regards to the importance of AGOA for the United States and for countries in the sub-region. However, that particular letter also emphasized that South Africa should be taken out from AGOA based on the size of its economy and that as a result of certain a relationship and dealings with Russia that they should be punished. But I think that in several areas, the United States is taking things out of context in a whole lot of other areas. There are several areas where South Africa and also the United States can work together. But if the South Africans feel that the United States is basically trying to tell them what to do, I think that's going to give this relationship a nosedive from what we are seeing. And more importantly, like what South Africa's Minister of Foreign Affairs has pointed out, at every time that South Africa engages, 
what they are looking at as is peace. They consider peace to be one of the most important things. In several areas where peace has failed, we've seen war taken over and we all know what the consequences have been. Hopefully these two countries can figure out themselves and find out how they can work together because like we've also seen, the US is not going to back down and South Africa more importantly is not afraid to tell the United States where this has gone wrong and also to stand its ground. want to thank you for watching. Let us know what you think with regards to this particular relationship between South Africa and also uh, the United States of America. Do you feel this relationship can escalate to a lot of other areas like sanctions and other areas? Let us know what you think. Leave us your comment and we are looking forward to meeting you in our next episode. Have a good day. Bye-bye.